Now, on a different note, though, uh, as we've been speaking the past few days, there's a thing called the Consumer Electronics Show that's been taking place in Las Vegas, where it's about three in the morning this morning, and a man who is willing to stay up that late or that early, depending on when he actually gets up, is, uh, is my mate Trevor Long, great technology reporter. His website, eftm.com or .com.au. His podcast, Your Tech Life. And he is there at three in the morning, big fella. Um, I've been at Vegas at three in the morning and I have not been, not been any sort of condition to do a live cross on TV. So you're a better man than me. There's no poker machines in this area, so I'm safe, Paulie. It's all good. I'll stay up for you any day, mate. All right, good. Excellent. Now, let's now as, as I mean, you've gone to this thing multiple times, but uh, is it something where this year there's been uh, a lot of new gadgetry, a lot of new stuff that's actually uh, floated your boat? Is it more of the same? How would you describe the, the whole thing before we get into some of your favourites? I kind of like the fact that it's not just one big thing. We've had years where it's all about the curved TV or it's all about 4K and that sort of takes away from everything else. So this is good because there isn't one big thing. There's a bunch of really good things and some there's some trends and there's some key themes and there's some fun gadgets. And I like that we can talk about all those things and not just the, the biggest companies in the world. Yeah, well, let's talk about virtual reality. You're all in on virtual reality headsets. That's big this year. How does it work? Well, it's big because they've put aside a whole part of the hall here. There's several companies with the, the heads. And these are these stupid things you put on your, on your head and you do look completely ridiculous wearing them, but it's immersive. Now, there's headsets and then there's cameras. Now, you won't be able to see this very well. This tiny little black sphere in my hand is a 360 fly. This records video in 360 degrees. So instead of just pointing forward, wow. it points all the way around. And then when you put it on Facebook or YouTube and you put these goggles on or even your smartphone, the viewer gets control, and so it's a really different experience for people watching video, and you will see an overwhelming amount of this content throughout 2016 because VR, virtual reality, is a massive thing for this year. I'm concerned about that because uh, most people take photos of things normally in their undies uh, in Facebook, so the <laughs> idea of 360 degrees is going to be very confronting for some people. Yes. Um, we all know yes, there's, all yeah, there's one part of the entertainment industry that normally pushes forward with technology, but we'll wait and see uh, which format they decide to go within the next little while. Um, now, talk about um, the fridges, TVs, all of this stuff. I mean, I love the idea that we've got 4K and Ultra 4K and Platinum 4K. Nothing's broadcast in 4K, no. but each year they flog some new telly at us. No, the good news, um, we are getting Blu-ray 4K. So we're going to get from Samsung and a few others, we're going to get the ability to actually get a disc put it in and watch 4K content without having to use the internet, which is the, the biggest problem is you've got poor internet. You can't stream 4K content, even if it is available. So there will be more 4K content. It'll never be broadcast, but there will be movies to watch. There are games and there is Netflix. So the 4K TV is great. They're really, it's, it's a tiny incremental increase in the, in the quality and the picture quality and the colours. But overall, if you bought a TV in the last, say, three or four years, don't stress, there's nothing radical that's going to make you go, oh, no. But there are, there are beautiful new TVs coming out from all the big companies, Sony, Samsung, LG, Hisense. There's plenty of new TVs if you're in the market. OK, and there are also Bluetooth speakers. I'm a massive fan of those. Um, and the idea of those now being big enough and good enough to, to work as part of your, uh, your home hi-fi set it's yeah. is, is sort of been the long-term dream. And, look, it's great that there's Sonos and all the rest of it, but that stuff costs way too much for the average bear. Yeah, I, I was at Sony today. They've got a massive booth here. It's ridiculous, the size of these things. You, you've seen it once. And, uh, mm. and, and they've got lots of little Bluetooth speakers. But I saw this one, and, Paulie, it's about 63 centimetres <laughs> tall. So it's like a big PA speaker. And it's only $550. So it sounds like a little bit of money, but to, to, to pump music into a party with strobe lights and all that kind of jazz, this thing's actually going to do very well for, for a party speaker, for anyone who's into Bluetooth and music, because it's, uh, it's the big thing, getting music through these speakers, freeing your phone and actually listening to it through good quality speakers. Now, I've been listening to your podcast, and I want everyone else to subscribe to it. It's called Your Tech Life. I'll put all of the details up on our Facebook page. But I heard a conversation about a thing called the Snore Pillow. Now, now, you, <laughs> you mightn't buy this for yourself, but your wife might buy it for you. How does it work? It's very cool. Uh, basically, there's a little device that sits on your bedside table and it listens. And when it hears Paulie, oh, oh, sorry, anyone snoring, <laughs> it actually inflates a little, little bit of an airbag in your pillow. And that little movement of your head opens up your airwaves and stops you snoring. Very gentle, doesn't wake you up, but it saves the bruises from the partner jabbing you in the ribs. That's so it just idea. raises you a little bit, lowers you a little bit, and snoring be gone. So 
That one is going to be very big, about 240 bucks in the US, so maybe 300 in the States. But the amount of publicity they've got, I think a retailer in Australia would be mad not to pick that one up. Yeah, that's good. A smart shoe, how do they work? Well, you know, everything's Bluetooth connected and you would never have thought you'd connect your phone to your, to your shoe, but a shoe can know absolutely how many steps you're taking, but it can also know whether or not your posture's good. It can heat up if it's a cold day before you get in it. Oh. So, you know, basic things like that, putting that's a bit good. of technology in the shoe. And, of course, the laces will do themselves up as well. So back to the future, Paul. Well, that's, that's, that is tremendous. All right. Well, have they actually come up with a hoverboard that is a hoverboard, by the way? Not just that BS Please. sort of hoverboard? <laughs> Let's not talk about hoverboards, yeah. Paul, because right, yeah. I'm still recovering from a broken arm. But the, the, the best we've seen is Intel and Segway uh, released a, one of those two, two-wheeler hoverboards, a, a more of a Segway, that was a bit more smart because it's actually a little robot. But no, there's no actual hoverboards, apart from Lexus that did that thing where it has to follow a certain track, but it's not really a hoverboard. OK, there's a couple more quick things I want to run through here. Tell us about the, the smart lock and also uh, the cup holder. Oh, yeah. So the cup holder is a great one. It's very simple. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a smartphone holder for your car, but it actually just sits in, in your cup holder. So, oh. you know, the, the smartphone on the, on the dashboard, not the best way to put it up on the, on the windscreen because it's in the way. So why not just put it in the cup holder there? Easy done. This one's the smart lock from an Aussie company called Dog and & Bone, and they've just here at CS released one for your, for your luggage. And all you do, Paul, you've got an app on your smartphone. That's you good. touch the screen, and it opens up. So Bluetooth, no key. It just opens up based on your smartphone. And if you need a key to my lock, I can just SMS you a key to my, my padlock on the back gate or wherever it might be. All right. Well, that also might have uh, some other applications for, uh, you know, cheating partners and handcuffs. Who knows where this could go into the future? Uh, last one here is uh, Kodak has basically been a company that's gone to the wall because people aren't using film anymore. But the Super mm. 8 camera, at a place where all of that new stuff is around, they're trying to relaunch the Super 8 camera. You see these old brands, Polaroids here. I remember my first time here five years ago was when Kodak had just filed for bankruptcy, or Chapter 11 as they call it over here. Uh, now here they are with a Super 8 camera, so using Super 8 film, but a digital viewfinder and an SD card to record the audio. So they're kind of trying to mix the old and the new, and this retro thing's big. I mean, Sony released a turntable uh, to, <laughs> to digitise your LP. So That's great. So maybe we are actually getting a bit of the retro into the tech. That's a great idea. All right, last one here. If I was able to cut a check for $10,000 um, and I gave you $10,000 and you could buy whatever the heck you wanted off the floor, what's the one thing you'd buy with ten grand? Ten grand, I'll buy a massive TV. There's no doubt. Like, <laughs> the, TVs are, the best TVs are too expensive for the average Joe, so I'd walk in and buy a big TV and probably a couple of snoring things. Okay, good stuff. Thank you very much, Trevor. Okay, he's got a lot of uh, a lot of outlets to get to. Uh, you can check him at eftm.com. That's his website, Everything for the Man. The podcast is Your Tech Life. Uh, lovely to see you, mate. All the best, and go and hit the Sex in the boy. City uh, poker machine for me. I'll put 20 on it for you, mate. Yeah, thank you. All right, mate. There he is, Trevor Long. Very good guy. You can also follow him on Twitter, which is at Trevor Long.